we can turn to that third body of evidence supporting the resurrection, the very origin of the Christian movement itself. Even the most skeptical New Testament critics admit that the earliest disciples at least believed that God had raised Jesus of Nazareth from the dead. In fact, they pinned nearly everything on it. Without belief in Jesus' resurrection, Christianity could never have come into being. The crucifixion would have remained the final tragedy in the hapless life of the prophet from Nazareth. The origin of the Christian movement hinges upon the belief of these earliest disciples that Jesus had risen from the dead. But the question now inevitably arises, how does one explain the origin of that outlandish belief? As R.H. Fuller urges, even the most skeptical critic must posit some mysterious X to get the movement going. But the question is, what was that X? Well, if you deny that that mysterious factor was in fact the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, then you've got to explain the origin of the disciples' belief in his resurrection as the result either of Jewish influences on them, pagan influences on them, or Christian influences on them. Now, clearly it cannot have been the result of Christian influences for the simple reason that there wasn't any Christianity yet. Since the belief in Jesus' resurrection lay at the foundations of the Christian movement, it cannot be explained as a later creation or retrojection of that movement. But what about pagan influences? Well, back around the turn of the 19th to 20th centuries, scholars in the history of religions ransacked the literature of ancient pagan mythology in the attempt to find various parallels to Christian beliefs in pagan myths. And in some cases, they actually thought to explain the origin of these Christian beliefs on the basis of these pagan influences. In particular, belief in Jesus' resurrection was thought to be paralleled and perhaps caused by pagan myths about dying and rising gods like Osiris or Tammuz or Adonis. The movement soon collapsed, however, uh, and was uh, almost universally given up among uh, New Testament scholars principally for two reasons. Number one, upon closer examination, it turned out that the parallels were spurious. In fact, there is nothing in pagan mythology that is analogous to the Jewish belief in resurrection from the dead or to Jesus' resurrection in particular. Myths of dying and rising gods in pagan mythology are simply symbols of the crop cycle as the crops die in the dry season and then come back to life in the rainy season. And there is no parallel at all to the notion of a historical individual who dies and then is brought back to life again. But secondly, in any case, there was no causal connection between these myths and the earliest disciples of Jesus. Uh, Jews were aware of these pagan myths of dying and rising gods, and they found them abhorrent. And therefore, these myths could make no progress at all in first century Palestine. We find no trace in first century Palestine of cults of dying and rising uh, gods. These do not appear until the time of the Emperor Hadrian in the second century after Christ. And thus, in the words of Hans Grasse, uh, skeptical New Testament critic, it is actually unthinkable that the earliest disciples could have come to believe that Jesus was risen from the dead because they had heard the myths of dying and rising uh, crop deities. And therefore, the resurrection belief on the part of the earliest disciples cannot be plausibly explained away as a result of pagan influences. But then what about Jewish influences? Well, in order to examine this, we need to back up for a moment and take a look at what Jewish belief in the resurrection was. In the Old Testament, the Jewish belief in the resurrection of the dead is attested in three places, Ezekiel chapter 37, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 19, and Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. 
during the time between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the belief in the resurrection of the dead became a widespread Jewish belief. During Jesus' own day, it was accepted by the sect called the Pharisees, although it was still rejected by the sect called the Sadducees. And it's interesting to note that on this score, Jesus actually sided with the Pharisees against the Sadducees in affirming the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. So the Jewish idea of resurrection from the dead was itself nothing new. But the Jewish conception of resurrection from the dead differed from Jesus' resurrection in two fundamental respects. In Jewish thought, the resurrection always, number one, occurred after the end of the world, never within history. It was a resurrection of the dead at the end of the world for purposes of judgment and then going to heaven or hell. Secondly, it always concerned all the people, all the dead or all the persons of Israel, never an isolated individual. In contradistinction to this, Jesus' resurrection was both within history and of an isolated individual person. According to Joachim Jeremias, and I quote, ancient Judaism did not know of an anticipated resurrection as an event of history. Nowhere does one find in the literature anything comparable to the resurrection of Jesus. Certainly, revivifications of the dead were known, but these always concerned resuscitations, the return to the earthly life. In no place in the late Judaic literature does it concern a resurrection to glory as an event of history. The disciples, therefore, confronted with Jesus' crucifixion and death could only have looked forward to the resurrection at the final day, at the end of the world, and would perhaps have kept their master's tomb as a shrine where his bones might reside until the resurrection on the judgment day, when they and all the righteous dead of Israel could be reunited in the kingdom of God. But they wouldn't have come to believe the un-Jewish and outlandish idea that he was already risen from the dead. According to Professor C.F.D. Mole of Cambridge University, we have here a belief which nothing in terms of prior historical influences can account for. Professor Mole points out that we have a situation here in which a large number of people held tenaciously to this belief, which cannot be accounted for in terms of the Old Testament or the Pharisees, and that these people held on to this belief until they were finally expelled from the synagogue. Professor Mole asks, if the coming into existence of the Nazarenes, a phenomenon undeniably attested by the New Testament, rips a great hole in history, a hole the size and shape of the resurrection, what does the secular historian propose to stop it up with? The birth and rapid rise of the Christian church remain an unsolved enigma for any historian who refuses to take seriously the only explanation offered by the church itself. The mysterious X is still missing. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.